Hey guys, Doterian here back with another Last Epoch video. So today I've got a Paladin video for you, which is going to be a Smite Hammerdin build. This build is built very tanky. It's going to be good at handling monoliths. It does really good AOE clears and also does good single target damage depending on how you build it. Now I've made my own adjustments to the build, but the very basics of the build, I'm going to put a link in the description down below. Now the idea behind the build is to smite things as quickly as possible. The smite is the main damage dealer of this build. You have hammers that orbit around you, but the hammers are just vehicles that you use to proc smite and deal damage. You'll notice that smite isn't actually even on my skill bar at all, because although smite is the main DPS skill, we never actually cast smite directly. We're going to be using hammers to trigger smite to cast it instead. Thus, instead of having smite on our skill bar, we're going to be using a lot of different buff skills as well as using shield rush as one of our traversal skills to get around quickly. And we have holy aura, healing hands, and volatile reversal for our buff skills. Now with this in mind, this build is very gear dependent. In terms of gears, first with your idols, you need to have Keen Adorned Raya Idol, and this gives you a chance to cast Smite when you hit things with throwing attacks. Throwing attacks meaning the hammer throw, you have a chance to proc Smite when the hammers hit a target. You can see here I've got four of them, and these this particular prefix has a four to nine percent chance to cast Smite. You want to get nine percent on all four of them. With four, if you've got nine times four, it's 36 percent. I've actually got six, seven, eight, nine percent on these four different ones. So I have a 30% chance to proc smite when I use a hammer throw. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is you need to have a devotion amulet as well. Now devotion amulet gives you increased cast speed and damage based on your missing mana, meaning that if you have less mana from your maximum, you'll cast smite faster and deal more damage. So let's quickly talk about what stats you want on your gear. And the main thing is looking at smite as a skill, we've basically specced smite so that it's a lightning skill with order of Lagon. And we're also gonna be dealing more damage with the sacrifice talent here. Essentially, the way we've specced into smite, you can see the scaling tags show lightning, spell, and attunement damage. Now, spell and attunement is the base stats. Lightning is simply because we've specced into it on the lightning tree. So essentially, these are the scaling tags that we're going to be looking for on our gear. Here, you can see I'm using a wand, again, because this is a, a more of a caster-based paladin build rather than a weapon-based. Now, with the wand here, you can see I've got spell damage and I've got mana. And with this particular build, the more mana that we have, the more damage we'll be dealing because based on our low amount of mana, we're gonna be dealing more damage. In terms of your prefixes, prefixes are going to be the top two stats on your items, are going to give more offensive based stats, things related to lightning, spell, and attunement. Now there's a bunch of different prefixes that you can get. You can see here, I've managed to get tier seven lightning damage on this particular one. So I'm picking using that. And I've also got 106% increase spell crit chance as well. So that's why I'm using that as well. So essentially you want anything relates to your spell damage, like crit chance, crit multiplier, increased lightning damage, uh, and also attunement on your other pieces of gear. In this case here, I've managed to get attunement on my chest piece. I've managed to get attunement on my boots. And you could get attunement on other pieces as well. It's just obviously based on the luck of the draw in terms of what you get. Um, <clears throat> the other parts as well, in terms of your gear, is you want throwing attack speed. Now, the reason why you want throwing attack speed is so that you can trigger hammer throw as many times as possible. So you want to spam out those hammers. You also want on your rings, you want minus three throwing attack mana cost. And with my particular item, if I use hammer throw right now, I have six mana cost per hammer throw. Whereas if I take this ring off with the minus three attack mana cost, I can see I it costs nine. So if I use hammer throw, it's gonna use up a lot more mana really, really quickly. You can also see my mana regen is actually quite fast. Now, the reason my mana regen is very fast is because I'm currently using um, the Urzel's Pride with um, increased mana regen per 3% uncapped lightning resist. And I actually have a lot of lightning resist because of that reason. So my mana regen is really quick. 
but essentially you want to get your mana pool as as high as possible now i haven't optimized all my gear yet <clears throat> when i do essentially you can get to a state where you have like 800 900 mana and at that point when you have a lot of mana your smites are going to be doing a lot of damage based on if it's very low and the way you can get mana on your build is to get mana directly so in this case on my chest piece i can get uh, flat mana and percentage mana you can also get attunement as well because you, as we know one point of attunement gives you uh, two mana so if you have 11 attunement it's going to give you 22 mana as well uh, now for your suffixes which is the def the bottom two stats on your gear you want defensive stats because the suffixes are more focused towards defensive stats. On your suffixes, you want things like percentage health. So you want flat health, percentage health, and hybrid health, which is both in one stat. Hybrid health is the most desired stat that you want. Um, and you can get health on pretty much all pieces of your gear here. You can see I've got increased health on my helm. You can get increased health on your chest piece. You can get it on belt. Uh, boots you can also get it on your gloves and rings as well i haven't managed to get um, percentage health and increased health on all pieces of my gear which is kind of why my health is only sitting at around 2.5k but you can get your health up to like 4k 5k if you want um, if you focus more towards that as well based on the other uh, stats on your suffixes you also want block chance because we're using a shield now shield, using a shield is crucial for this build and the reason why is because in the passive point tree in the paladin stats there is two passive nodes which make it so that having a shield is crucial so first one is heaven fire this one gives you additional spell damage when you have a shield equipped and it gives 30 spell damage which is huge and you've also got the sanctuary garden node which gives you 16 spell damage and 400 armor when having a shield as well so these two points make it so that a caster build with paladin is really really strong the other reason is because sentinels t pair very naturally with using a block so you can see here using a shield is really really good because again i've got 16 percent block chance plus my eight percent from my prefixes on this particular shield in the sentinel passive tree there's ways to get bonus block chance here i can uh, and you can pick these up really easily just by putting one point in so in this case for sentinel here uh you can get block chance on this point three percent you can get block chance here two percent you can get block chance in the forge card tree by putting one point in here two percent so just based on putting three points you can get seven percent block chance from uh, the skill nodes um, you can also get block chance on your rings as well so here i've got four percent block chance with effectiveness and so totaling up my block chance i've actually got 84 percent block chance with the potential to get two more based on what my weavers will um, hits now 84 block chance is really really good you can get this to 100 and essentially this means that i'll be um, every time i block i'm going to be taking 68 percent less damage so that's really really good in terms of uh, damage and block effectiveness i've also got some armor now my armor isn't insanely high so you could get your armor higher but just note that once your armor gets to like 70 percent um, it's much harder to scale your armor as because your armor flat lines out so having more armor isn't necessarily good because you need more and more armor to compensate for the fact that um, you, you take less damage but essentially my armor is much higher than normal because i'll also be taking 10 percent less damage based on this armor clad stat as well so when, when enemies are nearby i'm actually taking 10 percent less damage this makes us quite tanky if I did spec more points into the Forge Guard tree, I could take, for example, this no node, Battle Harden, to increase my armor when I get hit. Um, or I could spec into this particular node here to get increased armor and crit strike avoidance as well. But again, this particular build you can do without any specialized gear. The only thing you would need would be the idols and the devotion amulet. Okay, so those are things that you're focusing on. If you want a more detailed focus on specific types of stats to focus on there is that link in the description down below which you can look at okay now in terms of passives 
Now, in terms of the skill tree, again, I'm not gonna go through every single skill, but I will tell you what is important for each skill. With Smite specifically, you have the Order of Lagon turning Smite from a fire-based damage skill into a lightning-based damage skill. Um, the other nodes that are really useful, which I think is proccing the lightning bolts, lightning bolt targets. And the reason why is because all the things that we're scaling with Smite, the lightning bolts also scale off of as well. So you can see here, lightning, the lightning, the storm bolts scale off of lightning, spell, area, and attunement. And every time I cast a smite, I also have three additional lightning bolts that are triggered from this. The other node that's really, really important is this sacrifice node. So sacrifice makes it so that we deal 2.5 times more damage with smite, but it's gonna consume 15% of our current health. Then we go into this node, Atonement, which will make it so that we don't lose any health when we use Smite. So this, these 10 points gives us a 2.5 times multiplier on our Smite damage, making it so that this node is insanely good for our build. If you didn't take these Lightning Bolt nodes, we can actually go into the Crit Strike Multiplier node and the Crit Damage node as well, the Crit Chance node. So this Crit Strike Multiplier I think is really, really strong. Currently, if you get more Crit Strike on your build, so you can see here I've got 7% uh, Crit Chance and I've got 23% Spell Crit Chance, making it so that quarter of the time our Smites are going to deal Crit Damage. Here you can see I've got a 205 Crit Strike Multiplier. If we can increase our Crit Strike Multiplier with passives, uh, you can opt out some of the defensive passives and instead take more Crit Multiplier nodes instead. I actually like having more defensive options, which is why I've kind of opted into more defensive passives, but you can choose to pick up more defensive nodes, uh, offensive nodes instead. So for example, this one here, Attunement, this one would be really good for my build. You can see I get I can get 10 points of attunement on this particular node. Maybe the void resistance if this was capped. So the 72 and the void resist could be possibly some points that I could take out if I had capped them. Otherwise, I could take points out of some defensive nodes in here and opt into the attunement one instead. Okay, so for hammer throw now we have the most important nodes being Ballista. Ballista makes it so that our hammer throw deals more damage. We don't really care about the damage, but what we do care about is the mana cost reduction. So six mana cost reduction. The other two important nodes is hammer uh, iron spiral, which will make it so that our hammers spiral around us, but halves the amount of additional hammers and the hammers throw will cost more mana. And then we also have hammer vortex where our spiraling hammers will now orbit around us but the hammer throw costs more mana as well. Uh, we also want to pick up attack speed, making it so that we can spam out more hammers. That's probably the most important thing. And then finally we have guardian zeal. So this makes it so that our, we increase our crit strike chance per stack of zeal and we can get a max of three stacks. So this will pair nicely with our smite, making it so that we have increased crit strike to deal more crits. Next, we have a buff skill, which is Volatile Reversal. Now we've opted to take it so that our Volatile Reversal comes back more often, but it doesn't grant us mana and it doesn't grant us any health when we go back in time. But what Volatile Reversal is for is to help increase our move speed and also our attack speed and cast speed when we use Volatile Reversal. So this is like a, an attack speed steroid when we use it. We also have buffs to our Void Rift area. And when we do the Void Rift area, enemies hit by the Void Rift will take more damage. Enemies take 30% more damage. So this is a good buff to our damage. Next is Holy Aura. Holy Aura is one of our best buffs that Paladin have. And this is basically almost crucial for every single build. In fact, most Paladin builds will have Volatile Reversal and Holy Aura in it. And then with Holy Hands of how good the skill is, most Paladin builds are using Holy Hands now. So really the last two skills that people opt in for is just these two. So essentially a lot of Paladin builds just revolve around using Holy Hands, Volatile Reversal, and Healing Hands. And then our last two skills will be something different like Javelin or Judgment or anything like that. Most Paladin builds are pretty much 
the same, just the last two skills have been going to be changed. So Holy Aura, again, one of the best skills on Paladin. The most important things for Holy Hands for this particular build is going to be attack speed because we want to be attacking faster. We also want increased crit chance. And with Holy Aura, we can get some free poison resist as well, and also some elemental resist. So these are the main nodes that you kind of go through with Holy Aura. The other one is getting some more throwing attack speed with haste on chance. And again, this will make it so that we spam out our hammers faster. Finally, with healing hands here, we, we've gotten some nodes with extra ward. Ward will give us some extra defense. We've also got so that we have increased healing effectiveness. With the increased healing effectiveness, our ward is much stronger too. And so healing hands gives us a nice defensive skill through healing and healing effectiveness. Lastly, going into our passives, again, I've kind of already mentioned this, but with 20 points into the Sentinel tree, we've got our basic defensive skills that we take. So increased strength, resistance, armor, block chance. We take all the block chance nodes, one in Forge Guard, one in Sentinel, and one in Paladin. With the Paladin skill tree, we're also taking everything that buffs lightning damage so we've got lightning damage here, increased lightning damage and lightning penetration. We've got increased lightning damage here and extra move speed. We've got reverence of duality, which gives you everything. This is an insane node. So we've got increased health damage, healing effectiveness and increased mana. We've also got this one, which gives you additional crit multiplier with lightning skills. And we've got all our armor nodes as well. So we've got the armor node here, we've got armor nodes um, and the increased spell damage as well. So increased spell damage with shield, increased spell damage with shield. So those are the main things that you want to get in the skill tree for Paladin. I've also taken some extra resistance nodes here in the Void Knight tree for increased health and void resistance as well. If we could max out our physical resistance, we wouldn't need to get that one. So I could potentially look at getting physical resistance on my gear or perhaps in our blessings as well so that will help avoid um, getting that from blessings that's been my build guide of the smite hammerdon build if you learned something drop me a like down below comment and subscribe to the channel as always have an awesome day bye for now